I sent it yesterday, but then it came back. And I don't know, I mean, I copied it from John's. Okay. Oh, you're, you're fine. But you sent me this stuff, and I'm I, Yeah, yeah but I mean, it came back because I had the one address from you. And I think, you know how sometimes you type in a name? Yeah. And it pops up. Yeah. Pop several on pop up. Yeah. And there was another one in there that I can remember in it. That's the one that was true. The Gmail also had addressed it. Yeah, right. no, what was another Gmail? Well, really? I don't know why, but it came back. Well, if you have the people want to get rid of the cable one, one because it's no longer active. Oh, okay. They stopped having email. Yeah. Is that any number No, it's just that's a whole other cable one. Oh. But then I just use the same one plus the four one email. For real, though. Send it yesterday, but then it came back, so we sent it to you. So, <laughs> like, I am until so you're, you're in. I'm going to get it. I always said, you're in. That's right. Yeah. 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 Our liturgy this evening begins on page two in our booklet. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown the strength of your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. May God be with you and also, also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> God in heaven, by your grace, the Virgin Mother of your incarnate Son was blessed in bearing him, but still more blessed in keeping your word. Grant us who honor the exaltation of her lowliness to follow the example of her devotion to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, 
to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, of course, uh, today is September 8th. It is the... Uh, uh, what? What did I say? I'm just wondering if that ends up right. Oh, did I say December 8th? That's my birthday. Yeah. No, I think I probably did say December 8th. September 8th, which uh, is, of course, the feast of the birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, my birthday is December 8th, which was nine months ago. So the Immaculate Conception is celebrated on that day. So the day Mary was supposedly conceived was on December 9th. It's nine months, so that's where I'm all confused in my head. Well, I love this particular feast just as I love the Feast of the Immaculate Conception because it's all about Mary and about her birth, and it's a beautiful, beautiful story, and I love this particular gospel reading. You hear me preach about it all the time. It's Mary's yes to God, this, this wonderful yes, and everything that goes along with that yes that Mary uh, gives to the angel, and it's a beautiful, beautiful story. And uh, we really actually don't know when Mary was conceived or when she was born or anything like that. But I'm happy that the church has a birthday for Mary. There's a great meme going around on Facebook right now where it shows a little boy uh, holding up. His, his hands are folded and there's a rosary in his hands. And it said, it's your mother's birthday. Give her a call. I thought that was great. I love that. So, uh, I do love this feast because I, of course, have a deep devotion to the Virgin Mary. But we're actually going to commemorate the saint we had yesterday. So you get a two for tonight. You get Mary, but you also get the saint that we celebrated, uh, yes, yesterday. And there's actually a reference to Mary in this particular saint. So it all kind of ties in a little bit. So, uh, but I know that Annette is really going to love our saint for tonight. Okay. It's someone right up her alley, and she needs it because she's had a tough day today. So we're going to hear about Cassiani. Do you like Cassiani? Do you know Cassiani? Oh, if you don't know Cassiani, oh, you're going to enjoy Sounds Cassiani. Eastern. Huh? Sounds Eastern. It is. She's very Eastern. Like, I don't think you can get much more Eastern without being, like, Oriental. So this is, uh, this is Cassiani. Cassiani is the only woman whose writings appear in the official liturgies of the Orthodox Church. And one of the only, uh, one of two, only two Byzantine women who is known as an author under her own name. So, of course, she ties in very well to our commemorating very powerful women in the church. But I think also it's appropriate we commemorate her on this feast of the birth of the Virgin Mary. She was born to a wealthy family in Constantinople before 810. Uh, and Cassiani received an excellent education in matters both secular and sacred, impressing bishops and monastic leaders such as Theodore the Studite with her literary style and knowledge while she was still a young girl. Now we're gonna just pause here, and Annette probably can add a few things to this as well, but um, this is Byzantine Empire. This is, this is the, the Roman Empire of the, of the East at this time. And so we really have not, I don't think here at St. Stephen's on Wednesday nights, we've really explored that whole world, but it was a very rich, very beautiful world. This is Annette's kind of 
her, she's the expert in this particular area to a large extent. But it's a it's a fascinating uh, uh, corner of the of the Christian church that we in the Western world just really don't commemorate very often. We don't really think about it. When we think of the church, we think of Rome and we think of Europe. But there was this rich and very vibrant and very powerful Eastern church that was centered around Constantinople at this time. There was the Roman, em the, the emperor was a, in Constantinople during a period of time. And so we're, we're gonna hear a little bit about that as well. According to these three Bene uh, Byzantine chronicler chronicles, when Emperor Michael II of Amorion died, his son Theophilos, Theophilos, is that how we would say that? I think so, uh, succeeded him. To find a suitable empress for Theophilos, a bride show of eligible maidens was arranged. Now, how horrible does that sound? I mean, to our ears, this is the most horrible thing you can even imagine. But again, we have to understand it was that era and that time. So they had to find an empress. So it sort of reminds you of like Cinderella and, uh, and you know, the, the bad sisters and they're all trying to vie for the prince to, to get married to the prince. So you can just kind of imagine that's what it would have been like. Um, so the, the bride show was, was arranged and Cassiani was among the six finalists. In an ancient custom involving the exchange of a golden apple, which sort of serves sounds like the bachelorette or something like that, where they give the, the rose, uh, 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 Theophilos approached Cassiana saying, from woman, Eve, came our corruption. Now that's a way to win someone over for your future bride. Her bold response evidently proved too much for Theophilus. She said, but from woman, the Virgin Mary, also came our exaltation. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. Mic drop. Mic drop. Also, <laughs> uh, Golden Apple went to the next person. <laughs> Not to her because of this. And that went to Theodora, who became the Empress Theodora. So, and do you want to share a little bit about Theodora? You know a little bit about well, Theodora. There's lots of Theodoras. Oh, well, this would have been... This would have been uh, Oh, maybe this. Maybe I'm mixing the name, one of them up. Theo, Theophilos is Theodora. Maybe well, that's another one. Uh, uh, Who's the really corrupt one? There was a corrupt Theodora. Yeah. Well, she was. Um, what husband? Justinian. Okay. Well, here I was hoping it was her, but okay. I know. All right. Well, so this went to Theodora, and so poor Cassiani did not become the empress of the Byzantine Empire. Sadly enough, because she was so bold to say this. But I love it because it was a reference to the Virgin Mary, and that's appropriate today, today as well on the, the feast of the, the birth of the Virgin Mary. After her rejection by Theophilos, Cassiana immediately embraced the monastic life with what seemed more relief than disappointment at her narrow escape from becoming empress. Now, again, we talk a lot about these women who sort of leave the world and become nuns, and that was really the only alternative. Um, in the Eastern world, they did this as well. They were nuns. That was a kind of a different world for nuns in the Eastern world than it was in the Western world. But yes, she, she went and became a nun instead of becoming empress, which I think is pretty cool. Among her pursuits as a nun include musical and literary accomplishments of distinction, courageous defenses of the veneration of icons. Now we're going to just pause on that. That seems kind of innocent to us, but this was a big controversy going on in the church at that time about um, are icons something to be venerated or are they idols? And there was a big debate about that. There was a lot of uh, a contention in the church. There was some division, quite a bit of division. Finally, the church officially decided that yes, veneration of icons was appropriate, that we are not venerating the piece of wood, we're venerating who is represented in the piece of wood. So, uh, so she was a defender of that, which of course becomes kind of the orthodox standard. And then she also uh, founded uh, a new convent. She was actively involved in the theological controversies of her day, and an iambic verse she penned denotes her bravery. I hate silence when it is time to speak. So that's a really uh, amazing statement. I hate silence when it is time to speak. That's, that's very true. I mean, for a woman to be saying that at that time was a big deal. I mean, women were, for the most part, expected to, to be silent. By 843, Cassiani had built a convent 
on Zerolothus, Zer Zer the seventh hill of Constantinople, becoming the f its first abbess. Most notably, however, Cassiani was a prolific uh, hymn writer and poet. Hundreds of poems and approximately 50 of her, her hymns are still existing, including both her musical compositions and lyrics. Of these, at least 23 hymns are included in Orthodox liturgical books. The most famous, the hymn of Cassiani, is sung in the Orthodox Church on the eve of Holy Wednesday. I, I love that story. I think it's a beautiful story. I love this kind of, uh, it's, it's almost like a fairy tale kind of story, except you don't ever hear fairy tales about women who get passed over to be empress and become nuns. Though I think that would be an amazing Disney film, don't you? <laughs> No, nobody would go to it except me <laughs> and, and Annette. <laughs> we, would, we would like that. Um, I, I think it's fascinating. I, I just, I love stories like this. And I love how powerful she, she really was. Um, but what's amazing is we don't hear a lot of stories about women in the Eastern Church who did things like this. Can you think of any Annette that were doing things like this, who were speaking up and were being respected for, for speaking out, it was just something that really wasn't done very often. Like the Empress Irene. Yeah, well, but she was an empress too, so yeah. she could do that. Yeah. yeah. I can't think of this right now. It just wasn't, it's not something you, you hear about very often in was the. that theologian that hung out with the two Gregories? Yes, her, it was their sister, right? It was, yeah, Gregory she was their sister. Yeah. Um, uh, what was her name? Uh, Paula. Uh, I don't remember. I want to say Theodora for her too, but yeah, I don't. It could be. It does not sound all right, Theodora. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so Gregory of Nazianzus and Gregory of Nyssa, there was, there was um, uh, Basil. Basil was also the other one. Basil and one of the Gregories had a sister, and she was very powerful. But um, I don't remember all of her story off the top of my head. Thank you for bringing that up. And now, well, I can't remember her name either. But I have to think about it now. Um, uh, but I love the story of Cassiani, and I think it's very appropriate on this birthday of the Virgin Mary to to be commemorating something, someone like her. But I want to go back to the, the birthday of the Virgin Mary because uh, there is a long tradition, of course, in the Church of commemorating this this nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I think it ties in perfectly because a couple of months ago, of course, at the end of July, we talked about Anna and and Joachim, who were the parents of Mary, and how important. It is for us to kind of understand these stories that aren't necessarily in scripture, but still important for us in understanding the lineage of Jesus and who Jesus is and how there was a plan all along for uh, in, in the in the, the toward the birth of Jesus. And I love this aspect of the birth of the Virgin Mary, how we are not really even just celebrating the birth of the Virgin Mary. We are celebrating also the incarnation of Jesus because we know that this is opening the door to that. Yes. Yes. It's Macrina. Macrina, that's it, Macrina. And she's the sister of... It's a, she's the sister of Basil. Ba Basil, and then um, one of the Gregories, right? And one of the Gregories. Yeah. Yes. Macrina, yes. And uh, what do we know about Macrina, since we're kind of talking about it? Let's... Uh, we got from it. a well-established family of saintly intellectual leaders, it says here. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm just curious now because now we got to talk about her a little bit. Uh, so Macrina, Macrina was a monastic and a teacher. She was 3, 8, 379 when she died, and Cassiano was 865. So they were a couple of centuries apart from each other. Uh, but Macrina was uh, a monastic, a theologian, and a teacher. She founded one of the earliest Christian communities in the Cappadocian city of Pontus. Uh, she left no writings we know of, but she's known through her, the works of her brother, St. Gregory of Nyssa. Uh, in, in his life of St. Macrina, Gregory describes her both as beautiful and brilliant, an authoritative spiritual teacher. And um, so, uh, and then Gregory visited Macrina. She lay dying on two planks on the floor. He relates Macrina's last words as a classical Greek farewell oration imbued with holy scripture. Uh, 
So, and I'm sure that, well, certainly Cassiani would have definitely known of Macrina. And so I'm, I'm happy there's at least some of that tradition. But outside of Cassiani and uh, Macrina, there's not a whole lot of that Eastern church uh, commemoration of those, those women. We will see it later in the Orthodox Church, especially in the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, there's a lot of commemoration of, of powerful women at that time. Uh, Cassiani is actually a uh, fairly new saint. She's one of the the, the bracketed saints in the new books, which means she might stay, she might not. I hope she stays because I think uh, she's a good one. And uh, th this is also a time kind of for powerful women. So Cassiani was yesterday, birth of Virgin Mary, the Virgin Mary today. Tomorrow will be the feast of St. Uh, Blessed Constance and the Martyrs of Memphis, which we commemorate on a fairly regular basis. Uh, we commemorated her more than once during the, uh, during the COVID pandemic, but I didn't want to commemorate her today because, you know, we're kind of pandemic out. And uh, the, the story of Constance and her companions is just so heartbreaking and so heavy. So, uh, uh, but some very powerful women in the church. And I do want to say this about Constance. Uh, one of my disappointments in the church right now is that her particular order, the community of St. Mary, which is, uh, was used to be centered in Peekskill, New York. Uh, they ended up leaving that convent several years ago, moved out to the Diocese of Albany. I think you kind of know where I'm going with this one. And just within the last year or so, uh, there was a big controversy with the former Bishop of, of Albany, uh, uh, Bishop Love. He got in some trouble because of his uh, refusal to allow same-sex marriage in his diocese and got reprimanded and essentially booted from the diocese. Bishop Michael Smith now has, is uh, the bishop there for an interim period of time to help them through a period of transition. But the community of St. Mary that S Sister Constance and her companions were a part of, they ended up leaving the Episcopal Church over it and have now joined ACNA or one of those splinter groups. And uh, I've been very disappointed in in the community of St. Mary to, to do that. There's uh, two other um, uh, orders of that same community. They're all the same order, but they're, they're located in other places. One is in Suwannee, Tennessee. They did not leave the Episcopal Church. And so I ended up, I, I contributed some money to the sisters of uh, this, the community of St. Mary in Albany for several years, but I'm just moving it over to the Suwannee right now because um, I'm very disappointed in them over this, and, and it's a very sad thing. It just shows the divisions that are going on in the church, and I think, I, I can't imagine that Sister Constance, I think she would be somewhat disappointed as well. So that was a whole thing I didn't mean to get into. So we're going to just close tonight with a prayer for Cassiani tonight, so let us pray. O oh God of boundless mercy, whose handmaiden Cassiani brought forth poetry and song, Inspire in your church a new song that following her most excellent example, we may boldly proclaim the truth of your word, even Jesus Christ, our Savior and Deliverer. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Let us proclaim the greatness of the Lord and rejoice together in the God who saves us. You do great things for us. Holy, Holy is, is your name. name. You have mercy on those who fear you in every generation. We pray for your church, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for all the people of God. You do great things for us. Holy, Holy is, is your name. name. You show the strength of your arm and cast down the mighty from their thrones. We pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. You do great things for us. Holy, Holy is your name. 
You lift up the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. We pray for the sick and the suffering and for all those in any kind of need. You do great things for us. Holy, Holy is your name. name. You come to the aid of your servants and remember your promises with mercy. We remember Oris Carlson and all who have died in the faith of Christ. Bring us with them to share the joy of heaven with Mary and all the saints. Lord, you do great things for us. Holy, holy is your name. name. God most holy, so guide us in the way of humility and obedience like Mary, that our lives may be a constant hymn of praise to you from whom all good things come. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And always peace with you. Peace, also with you. peace. Please be seated. Just a few announcements before we continue with our service. Uh, first and foremost, the big thing coming up is, of course, Dedication Sunday coming up this Sunday. We are very excited to have Dedication Sunday. Uh, this is our... 65th year so we're celebrating that's kind of a milestone to be celebrating that uh so we're very very excited about that we will have a blessing of backpacks uh we're gonna i don't know if we're gonna be doing a new member recognition so much as a welcoming back of a member who kind of went away moved away and then has moved back i think you kind of know where i'm going with this but i'm not going to say much more than that we're going to leave it just at that uh but we're kind of excited about that so that's always fun to be able to do uh, and there will be an 8 o'clock right one mass on Sunday, uh, and then at the 11 o'clock service, we're going to be doing our first Enriching Our Worship mass on a Sunday morning, which we're excited about. Of course, we're doing Enriching Our Worship, a version of it tonight, so uh, that will be very, very exciting for us to be trying out a new liturgy uh, for the Sundays uh, for the next couple of weeks, so that is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be out of town tomorrow through Saturday, maybe. Maybe I'll be back early. I was going to go up to Canada but then uh, I panicked myself thinking if I get trapped up there, I never know what's going to happen. They all of a sudden decide to close the borders. We live in an uncertain time. You never know what could happen. So I kept thinking, oh, it'll be my luck. I'll get trapped up in Canada. And so I decided I'm just going to the Iron Range for a couple of days. So if I get trapped in, you know, the communist utopia that is the, uh, the Iron Range, that'll be all right. I'll be, I'll be just fine with that. Uh, so I'm going to the, the Iron Range for a couple of days, and I'm kind of excited about that. So... I don't know if excited is quite the word. I don't know if I'm excited to be going to the Iron Range, but it'll be kind of interesting. I have a couple of places I want to see uh, because I'm weird and, you know, I do weird things. Uh, most people go, hey, I want to go look at mines and what do I want to do? I want to go see the, the where Paul Wellstone's plane crashed and uh, different things like that. I want to go see, you know, the... Uh, the park, they have a park there that the uh, the Socialist Party put together. And I thought, oh, I want to see that. I want to see where Bob Dylan was born. So that's going to be some of the things I'm going to see. So, you got a place uh, reserved to stay? No. No, I'm going to just play it by ear. I, sometimes I do that. So Watch out for the bears. My friend who lives up there said they're, they're out. He had one on his front porch. <laughs> he lives outside of International Falls. He said there was Thank one on his, you. There was one on his porch. Thank you, Just John. May first. Make here, noise. I was all excited. I thought, oh, I'll be safe. I'm not going up to Canada. Make noise. Oh, I don't have any problem. <laughs> Let me tell you, I have no. You don't problem. want to surprise them. <laughs> Ring the bell. Yeah. <laughs> Ring a bell. Oh. They'll drop to their knees. You, no, oh, thank God, none of you are going to be seeing me up there because that's going to be not pleasant. I had a very unpleasant experience with a bear when I was in uh, Kenora, Ontario, one time. So, um, yeah, not excited about bears. 
Uh, let's see what else is going on besides bears and the Iron Range. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, just looking ahead down the road a little bit. Of course, we do have our Blessing of Animals coming up on October 3rd. Uh, also, uh, the weekend of October 8th and 9th, there will be the uh, Diocesan Convention coming up. So I ask your prayers for our delegates who are going to be heading out to Bismarck for that that event. It should be very exciting. It's all going to be kind of brand new. It's kind of like going to convention for the first time all over again, because we have a new bishop. We have a whole new kind of way of looking at things. Uh, we're going to have kind of a fun little liturgy that I've been helping with, and I'm really excited about that. So those things are kind of exciting. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, convention. And I think literally Everybody here that's in the church building today is going to be going to convention. So that is really kind of great. So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, let's see. I'm missing out on something. I know I'm always missing out, but I, I never remember what it is. So we'll just leave it at that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth is given and human hands have made. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Our liturgy continues on page seven. <clears throat> the Lord. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let him up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, Almighty and ever-living God, to proclaim the wonders you have worked in all your saints, and on this feast of Mary to echo her praise of your loving kindness. For you have truly done great things, and holy is your name, and your mercy is on those who fear you in every generation. When you looked with when you looked with favor on your lowly servants, you remembered your promise of mercy and gave the world through her, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him, the hosts of heaven adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in the triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. Recalling your great goodness to us in Jesus, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus, our Savior. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has sought us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. Everyone here is welcome to receive Holy Communion. And let us pray for all those who at this time cannot receive communion. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who feeds us and gives us eternal life. We pray for those who uh, cannot be here at this time to consume these gifts of his body and blood and this bread and wine. But we pray that they may receive the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may all continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, who gave joy to Elizabeth and Mary as they recognized the signs of redemption at work within them, help us who have shared in the joy of this Eucharist to know the Lord Jesus deep within us and his love shining out in our lives, that the world may rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God, who sent Mary to visit Elizabeth, to share with her the joy of the divine plan, give you grace to tell out the good news of Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, be with you now and always. Amen. Let us now go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.